Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've been following along, I'm about to get started on some fabrication work on my Ranger. Now, before I get into that, I have some maintenance to do on some of my stuff here, uh, including my old Hobart plasma cutter. Now, if you guys have one of these or are looking at these, uh, mine in particular is the Air Force 250 CI. Uh, it's got a built-in compressor, everything. It's a 110, 115 unit, whatever you want to call it. And this thing, for being a tiny little kind of briefcase style, lightweight little plasma cutter that runs on 110, does an outstanding job. I've had this unit in particular for somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 15 years and have honestly never done anything to it, including replacing the consumables. This thing has got some heavy work over the years. It lives in a terrible environment underneath my welding cart. As you can see, this thing is filthy. Now, the last few times I've went to use this unit, unfortunately, I've been having some issues with it. I will get a few seconds into a cut, and this thing will go into thermal protection and just shut down on me. So there's a few things I want to do today. I have a pretty good idea where we're going, but basically, I want to do some repair on this thing and just some overall maintenance on it. Now, as you can see outside, this thing's pretty filthy. And uh, unfortunately, that's not a great thing on them. Uh, right here is the intake fan. It's got like a little uh, PC type fan behind it that draws air in. It does have a little air compressor down here. And then, of course, the exhaust vents for any of the hot air coming out. Part of what I want to do today is just some regular maintenance on this thing. Uh, be aware that if you have one of these, uh, some of the stuff I'm going to do is probably not recommended by Hobart and uh, will more than likely void your warranty. Fortunate for me, I've been out of warranty for probably a decade on this unit. So what I want to do today is try and kind of clean it up, clean the exterior up. I'm going to pull all the case screws out. I'm going to blow all the dust and debris out of the interior of this thing. And finally, I'm going to look into why this thing's going into protection mode and hopefully remedy that issue. So to start off with, I just want to give the outside of this thing a good cleanup, uh, really get it looking good. I'm nothing too fancy here. I'm just going to use some glass cleaner, a rag, and uh, once I get through with that, just a little compressed air. And uh, And overall, just, like I said, get the exterior a little cleaned up, get all the dust and dirt off the thing, and kind of go from there. So I won't bore you with scrubbing this thing down, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get the outside cleaned up real quick, and then we'll start zipping these screws out. All right, nothing too crazy here. Just got a little uh, eight millimeter socket chucked up in the old drill here. And just run the uh, 11 billion screws out of the case. Like I said, keep in mind that if your unit's still under warranty, this may be frowned upon by Hobart. I'm not sure how they feel about opening cases. So I'm just doing this to better access it. Get it on there. I'm just doing this to better access the unit and uh, be able to blow any dust and debris out of the inside of it. So here we go. We'll lift this thing off. And if you've never seen what the inside of a plasma cutter or a welder or anything like that look like. There you go. Obviously, you want to be careful digging in here, it, touching anything. There's a lot of high current electric stuff in here. So I'm going to keep my fingers out of the mix here. And uh, I'm obviously not going to spray any, any stuff on it. I'm not even going to put glass cleaner or anything like that on it. Really, I just want to get in here with the air gun and be able to blow all this dust and dirt out of here. You can see down in the bottom of the case, hopefully you can see that, just a heavy layer of dust. Can't be great on the uh, compressor. 
I may see if I can get the air filter out of there and blow that out while we're in here. But overall, just a lot of dirt and grime in here that I want to get cleaned up. Because as we all know, electronics, they love dirt and grime. All right, just got the uh, shop air hooked up here. And like I said, just blowing this thing out, nothing too crazy. All right, next thing I'm going to do here is take the uh, air filter out, check that thing out, see if I can blow it out. Just a 5 8 wrench on my particular model gets this thing loosened up. It is just a little plastic housing, so nothing too terrible. You don't want to over tighten them or anything like that. Let's see if we got enough room to sneak this out of here. There we go. There we go. Just a little tiny kind of felt filter and then also a little piece of foam. It doesn't look too terribly dirty, but I'm still going to blow this thing out anyway and uh, yeah, we'll go back together with it. I don't know if the camera really did that justice. Hopefully that picked that up. But there was a surprising amount of dust and crap in both of these filters. So, just pop her back together here, line the tabs up, snap her in place, there we go, easy as that. Just screw it back on and we're done with that portion. Alright, as far as maintenance goes, that's about all I wanted to do. Clean up the interior, make sure that air filter was in good shape, and just overall blow all the dust and grime out of here. So, I blew out the in inside of the case there. That's all there is to it. Button the screws back in, and we're done with this part. Now we can move on to looking into why this thing's going into thermal protection. Normally this lives in the bottom of my welding cart, but since I already have it out for all this, we'll just throw it down here, plugged into the wall, and hooked up and ready to do some cutting. So we'll flip the thing on. Power's up, no problem. Let's make sure the compressor kicks on. <laughs> Compressor kicks on. I got good airflow out of the thing. Yep. Everything's working as it should. Let's try and cut some metal with it. Alright, so I tried to set this thing up as best as possible to where you can see me cutting and watch the plasma cutter and see what it does. So I just got a piece of scrap sheet metal. This shouldn't be anything for this plasma cutter to go through. Used to do it like butter. So Let's see what we get here. Nothing. Compressor will run, but it's flashing the cup light now, which is interesting. Nope. Oh. Still flashing the cup light. Well, let's take a look into this. Well, as I've said before, I have over a decade in using this machine and really have, to be honest, neglected it. I've never once changed the consumables in this thing, and it shows. And, uh, you know, like I said, overall, this thing's been a trooper. So, we'll dig into this. Now, without having a manual or anything, I can probably guess the reason why it's setting a cup fault. So we'll take a look at this. My cup on this is obviously seen better days. 
the tip on it just pushes back through the cup should push back through the cup if it wasn't in such rough shape there's your tip that thing's seen better days that needs to be replaced definitely internally the cup itself doesn't look too bad though the outside is completely fried that needs to be replaced as well now here's what is concerning if you look at the actual tip in here oh first of all it's loose which is cool the tip is completely melted other than that the ring on there seems to be in good shape and the o-ring seems to be in good shape a little bit of cleanup inside there and i should be good to go so i know that a cup kit for these if you didn't see in my cleaning they put a sticker on the top that gives me all my part numbers for everything that i need so it'll be handy for you guys if you don't have that same sticker but i think Those four parts right there should get me going. I'll try and put a shot in here of that. I know the retaining cup here uh, is a little harder to get. The consumables, the tip and electrode, uh, seem to be in stock. So I may just run and get those and see if I can get away with reusing the retaining cup and the swirl ring and see if we're back in business. All right, well, here we are. After a quick run to the store, uh, kind of what I was thinking, all they had was the tips and electrodes. So I will go online, of course, after the video here and order a new retaining cup and swirl ring. But for the time being, I'm going to see if this will take care of the problem that we have and get me working anyway. Just grab a couple out of here. Start popping this thing back together. So the first thing that goes on is that little swirl ring. It just kind of sits in there goes that way has a little bit of tension the electrode then just screws on there I give that a little tiny snug see if I have a small enough wrench I sure do that's just a little quarter inch wrench and I'm not gonna crank that thing on there tip of course the one that was in there before fought me this one just slides in nice nice tight fit on there and we'll pop this all back together. All right, let's get this thing hooked back up and see if we can start cutting some metal with it. All right, same deal as before. I got the plasma cutter plugged in. It's turned on. Everything's ready to roll. So let's see what we got. <laughs> Perfect, right back to cutting like it should. Just threw this stuff like it's nothing. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm glad to have this thing back up and running, cutting better than it has in years. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get to work fabricating on this Ranger. This thing is definitely handy. And if you guys haven't used one before, I highly, highly recommend it. So I definitely got some work cut out for me. Ha <laughs> ha, cut out. Eh. Anyway, I tried on the old Ranger here. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll join me for that one. Definitely going to be diving headfirst into some of the fabrication work, cutting, welding, doing all that. And, uh, you know, like I said, hope you join me for that one, where this thing is going to get another good workout on another one of my projects. So, yeah, that's about it. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.
mine with a little buddy. Let's go back to your hole.